Hi, my name is Oliver, and in this video, I'll teach you how to animate a ping pong bat in After Effects. So, to get started, I've illustrated this simple ping pong bat, and I've split it up into some different layers, so let's quickly go through them. The first is just the handle here at the bottom, then we have the bat, the sort of top part, and then we have the string going out. Just a simple stroke, but you have to notice that if I go into the string, just open this up and click on the paths. I have dragged out the sort of hands for each side and I'll show you what that does later on. And then at last, we just have the ball here. So if you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and download the project file. There's a link down below. And then you can take a deeper look at the keyframing or you can actually take the illustration and try and animate this on your own. So before we start animating anything, we will try and create a parent chain so everything really works together perfectly. Now the, the logic way to do this is that we have the handle as sort of a control layer. So the handle is what's going to sort of act out the entire motion. So when we select the handle, we want to take the anchor point and place it here at the bottom so we can actually do some proper rotation. Therefore, we'll go up and select the pan behind tool Click the anchor point and hold down command and control and it will snap to the bottom. Now we'll take the bat and the anchor point for the bat doesn't really matter because we're not going to do any movement on that exact layer. So therefore we'll take the parent option here and just drag it down to the handle, which means that when the handle moves, the bat moves itself. Now the path is a bit more tricky because you would have to animate each point every time it moves and it would just get really annoying. But there's actually a way we can fix this. If we select this string and open it up, we'll find the path property and you have to select the keyframeable one. Then you go to window, go all the way down and search for create nodes from paths, which is built into After Effects. Click on it and then we get this menu. So we can get the points, which are in the path, you can see these two points to follow nulls. Or we can do the opposite, but we just want to click the first option. So that creates these two nulls. And we just close down this menu again. And now if these nulls are hard to see, we can just select them, go out here to the left side and click the color, and we can select another color, so maybe blue. So that's a bit easier to see. Now the smart thing about this is that if we drag one of them, you can see that the path will automatically animate. And also we can parent these to the bat itself and the ball, so that's excellent. So we'll actually just take the first null here that's positioned on the bat and parent it to the handle. Then we will take the ball right here and we'll parent that to the sort of second null out here, which means that this will control the ball and then if we select the handle, that will control everything except for the positioning of the ball. And that's really what we want. So now we can start to animate this. So we'll start out at the handle and we're going to do some position and rotation keyframes. So we press P to get the position and then Shift R to get the rotation. Now before we start animating, we're going to right click the position, separate the dimensions because we only want to work with the X position, which is the horizontal. Now we want two key poses for this animation. We want one where the bat is at the front and it's tilted forward as it hits the ball. And we want one where it's all the way back and it's tilted backwards. So let's add a keyframe to the X position and the rotation. We'll just take this bat a bit forward and add some rotation. And then we have to select an interval. So let's say five keyframes. It's, it's a rather quick animation, so we can push this backwards and we can also rotate it backwards, sort of like this. Now you can see that we have this animation between these two key poses. And to actually be able to loop this animation, we need to take the two first keyframes and copy them. Then we also go the five keyframes ahead, so to 10 keyframes, and then just paste it. So that way, if I press N here to sort of trim the work area, you can see that this is just looping. And this looks rather boring right now, but that's because we haven't added any easing or any offsetting yet. We'll just select all of the keyframes and press F9 to ease them, go into the graph editor. And here you can see it's quite hard to see what's going on because we have selected so many different graphs. So let's just start with the X position. Now we want it to hit rather hard as it, as it just goes forward right here. 
So we want this motion to be really sped up towards the end. And here we're working with the value graph, as you can see. So this is the value over time. So we can start with some simple easing in the center. This is where the bed moves to the back. So we really want to ease this. So it goes slowly to the back and then we want it to speed up. So what we actually can do here is that if we take this handle and drag it up like this, see it really speeds up here towards the end. It's a really big value change. But then we want this curve to sort of catch that curve. Because right now it it's, looks sort of weird because it's very snappy right here. But we can just do that if we sort of reverse the curve. So we have to imagine that this curves go down into this one. So we just have to drag this downwards like this to make it catch that. So that way you can see it sort of follows that. We can also sort of make it not stop completely here in the center because we want the movement to sort of continue a bit backwards and then snap forward. So sort of an elastic movement. And we can do that by just dragging this handle down and this handle up. So that way you can see the movement never really stops. And right now it's pretty hard to see because we haven't done it for the rotation yet. But we're just going to add sort of the exact same easing for the rotation. So we'll start up here in the center, drag it out, then make this really accelerate, make this catch that acceleration, and then make this movement sort of more elastic and never stop. So right now you can see we really have the snap movement like duk, 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 and, and you can see that it, it looks all right, but it's rather stiff. And the reasoning behind this is that the bat's rotation and positioning would never really move in sort of the same interval. It should be offset a bit. So we can do this by just taking the bottom keyframes here, pressing Alt or Option, and then click the right arrow key two times. And you can see we just get this simple offset. So right now this is quite hard to play because we haven't looped it. You can see here at the start, we lack some rotation sort of animation. Here at the end, we lack some positioning animation. But we can fix this with a simple expression. We'll just Alt the Option click one of the properties, we'll type in loop in, and then we'll type in plus loop out right here, and then we'll type in minus value. So what this does is that it, if there's sort of a blank space at the start, as there is here in the bottom, it will sort of fill that out with the last part of the animation, and then it will loop it afterwards. So we can copy this expression to the rotation, and I can show you what I mean. So right here, you can see when we go backwards, that's sort of actually animating, and it's just taking that value from this keyframe. So it loops on either side, and then when we play this, you can see that it loops perfectly and just goes on. So we can always go back and adjust this, but let's move on with the animation. So right now, we can actually start animating the ball. So as you can see, the sort of ball is attached to this null that's controlling the string. So we're going to animate this null. Now we will press P as in position, right click and separate the dimensions. And let's just start with the X position. So we actually want to start this animation at the point where the bed is at the furthest in the front. So if we go up two keyframes ahead, you can see this is where it's most extended. If we go one keyframe ahead again, you can see that it's just, it's just starting to go backwards. So we can just drag this in. So it's hitting here at the center. We can actually just delete this first keyframe because we want it to start here. Then we go five keyframes hit by pressing Command and Control, clicking the right arrow key five times. And then this is where it should be extended the furthest. So you can sort of decide how elastic this is, but we can drag it out a far bit right around here. And then we go five keyframes head again. And we just copy and paste that first keyframe. And now every time we animate a property, we have to remember that we should copy this expression and all click and paste it so everything loops perfectly. So we can select the keyframes and press F9 to ease them, go into the graph editor. So you have to imagine that here at the center, this is where it should be eased the most. So we can just drag the easing out a bit here. And then as it goes towards the bat, it should accelerate. So we can drag this up. And then as it goes out from the bat again, it should deaccelerate into that easing. So we have this sort of sharp graph here at the start and end. And as you can see right here, that sort of works, but we can also make that elastic movement so the motion never really stops by simply dragging this up and dragging this down. And you can see that it's looping with the rest of the animation. 
Now, if you want to, you can animate the Y position to make it a bit more interesting. So as an example here, you can make it hit a bit lower and then you can go to the middle and you can maybe, maybe make it go upwards sort of like this. And then at the end, you just have to copy that first keyframe. Press F9 to ease it all. And here we just want to make sort of, sort of the same easing. So just drag this out like this, drag this up, make this a bit elastic like this. And here you have to remember to copy this expression and paste it so we have it looped properly. And as you can see, that works and it's animating as it should. So you can really just adjust these values. If you want this to be a bit more linear, you can do it like this. So it's actually stretched out properly. And you can also see the reasoning why I added the, those sort of handles to the path is so when this moves inwards, you can see that the string isn't straight all the time. It sort of bends together just for a moment here, as you can see. Let's take a look, just zoom out. You see this animation and you can sort of exaggerate it as much as you'd like. So if you want to, we can drag this out even further. But I think this is great for now. And we can try and add some squash and stretch to the ball. So if we select the ball, we'll just select the pan behind tool and we'll hold down command and control and make it snap to that point where the string is sort of attached right here because we want the, the ball to squash and stretch in that direction. So we'll just start this at the same point as, as the positioning of the ball and we'll just press S as in scale and unlock the constraint proportions. So we'll just go with the flow here. You can see this is the point where it hits the bat. So this is where it should be squashed on the bat. So you have to remember that in squash and stretch, you retain the volume. And therefore, if we drag this inwards, we could go for 75 for this. Then it's gone down 25 in that one. And we have to go up 25 in this one. So plus 25. So you can see as it squashes in, it also stretches up. You can add a keyframe to that and then go, let's see, just go one keyframe ahead because that's when it starts to sort of pop out really quickly. And that's where we want it to be stretched. So we can do the opposite of this. We just go 125 in the X scale and 75 in the Y scale. So you can see it sort of goes from one extreme to another. And then we go to the center and this is just where we want it to be normal. So 100, 100, and then we go ahead to one keyframe before it hits the bat. And this is why we want the stretch position again. So we just copy that from here and paste it. And then here at the end, we want it to be squashed. So copy and paste that as well. So as you can see, it sort of stretches out, goes normal, stretches again, and sort of squashes in. And we just really follow the acceleration. So you can see whenever it's the fastest, that's sort of when it's stretched out. And then as it slows down, it goes back to normal and then it speeds up again, gets stretched and then squashes as it, as it sort of hits the bed. So select the keyframes and press F9 to ease them. And the only thing we want to adjust here is the center because this is the point where it's the most eased and therefore we just want to drag out these handles. So we really exaggerate that easing on the ball as well. So you can see it takes a bit longer for it to get stretched here and then it squashes instead of it just getting stretched way too quickly. So we will copy the expression again and paste it onto that layer. And we can try and take a look. So you can see that ball sort of squashes and stretches and that's really what we want. So now we can actually add just a bit of smear to the ball just to really exaggerate the fast speed. So go to effects and presets and search for the echo effect and drag that onto the ball. Now this will just create copies on the ball depending on where it's moving. Right now you can see it's way too far behind. So we'll go into the echo time and just replace this free with a zero, set it to maximum to make it blend properly. And we can go for four echoes. And you can see as we play it, we have a bit of this smear action. And really this is up to preference if you like it with or without, but I like a bit of smear because this motion is so quick. So now we actually just need to add one more thing to the animation and that is sort of the bat bending back and forwards. So you have to imagine that a bat is very stiff 
and as it moves back and forward, of course it doesn't bend, but it sort of becomes an illusion because you repeat that motion so quickly that, that, that the top of the bat sort of wobbles back and forward. And that's also the same as if you've tr ever tried sort of taking a pencil uh, between your fingers and moving it very quickly up and down. It sort of seems like it's bending up and down, but that's just because it's an illusion because you're moving it so quickly. So we want to add this illusion. Uh, we will select the bat here and we'll just search for the CC bended effect and drag it onto the bat. Now I want these start and end points to stick to the bat, so we'll alt option click the start property, type in to comp and then value, which just essentially makes it stick to the comp value. We can copy that and paste it onto the end property. Then we select the CC bended and we just have to adjust these points. So as you can see, we have one down here. This should go to the bottom around here. And then the top one should go to the top and you have to drag it out as far as, as the sort of bat wants you to because if it's too far down, you can see you sort of start to lose the illustration. But this seems good. And we want to animate the sort of bend. So we can just add a keyframe to the bend and press U. We can actually press Command and Control A and then U to see every single keyframe. And now we want this to be really offset from the rest of the animation. You can see we have the start here, then we have two keyframes offset, and then we maybe want a four keyframe offset. So if we go to the start, we press Command and Control, click the right arrow key four times. And this is where we want the animation to start. So here at the start, we want the bat to be bended forward. So we can just drag it forward, sort of like this, and just try and and sort of get a value that you'd like. We'll take a look at it later. And then we go five keyframes ahead and it should be bent in the other direction. So we'll just make it positive and maybe bend it a bit more, sort of around the 50 mark. And then we go five keyframes ahead and we copy and paste that first keyframe. So you have to take a look at the start of the string here. It's not really aligning in the sense of the bat anymore because the sort of bat is moving to the left and to the right, and we have to sort of line that up again. So we have to select that null layer for that string, press P as in position, right click and separate the dimensions, add a keyframe for the X position, and here we just want to drag it to the center at sort of the start of that bend. Then we want to go to the next point of that bend and just drag it into the center again, right around here, then copy and paste the first keyframe. Then we can select those keyframes and press F9 to ease them. We'll just start with the bend, so select those keyframes and go into the graph editor. And here we want to add sort of the same easing as we did to the X position. So the way we did this is that if we zoom in, we added some easing here in the center, and then we sort of made it a bit elastic, like this, made it accelerate towards the end, and then sort of catch that motion curve here at the start, sort of like this. And we want to do the same with the X position. So you just have to roughly uh, get this right. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we just want to sort of follow the same motion path to get the result that, that we really want for this animation. So right around here. And then of course we have to go in, copy the expression, and we just paste it onto those two layers. So now you can see we have that bat movement, but one problem that's occurring is that the ball no longer lines up as well. So we can just go to the sort of start here of the ball positioning. So to line it up, let's just first of all, just disable the echo effect so we can see what we're working with. Take that starting point and sort of drag it into the center around here. Then we copy those keyframes and paste them to the end. And here you just have to adjust the easing again. So go into the X position, and just drag this up in the Y position and drag this up. Now this looks a bit strange. We just adjust it so it works. And this should now hit right. So let's zoom out again and try and preview this. And you have to enable the echo again. So as you can see, we have created the final animation. We have some great movement, some very snappy movement. We have the bended, the squash and stretch on the ball and the smear effect. And everything just feels really great together. 
So I hope that you learned something from this tutorial and found it helpful. If you create something from this, make sure to share it with me on Instagram at Oliver Randolph. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, post a comment down below and tell me if you have any questions for the video or if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now, till next time.